Welcome to this tutorial where I'm going to tell you about variables. In the previous episodes I already discussed some of the variable types and now I'd like to show you some more details on this. For example, if we take the byte, it's an 8-bit number, an integer is a 16-bit number. So when do we use this? Well, if you need to store a number which is like 10 or 100, something between 0 and 255, it's sufficient to use a byte. So you use less memory. You can store two bytes in the place of one integer. Now another interesting thing is that if we have a look at this integer or at this byte and I take the integer for example. So let's say we have an integer. So I define an integer x and I say it is 3, 2, 7, 6, 7 plus 1. So now the compiler has a problem because it's running out of memory to store this integer because I make it too big. So what will happen if, if I add 1 to this maximum number? Well, what happens is that you will start all over again and end up with minus 32,768. This could cause some weird behavior. When I was programming, sometimes I didn't calculate very right the amount of numbers I was storing in the certain data type. So what happened was that I stored more than could fit inside that uh, variable. And my program started behaving very weird. Just keep that in mind if when you're using a variable that your, the data you expect, the maximum data you expect, that it fits the type you choose. Let's say we make a very small program and I want to use something which doesn't fit in a byte, so let's say my year of birth. So I make a variable int year of birth, oh, year of birth, and I'm from 83, and I make a variable current year. So basically now, it's 2019, I can calculate my age. So we can say int h is the current year minus the year of birth. So now when I verify my program, you see an error. And what happened here? It said the year of birth is not declared in the scope. So what does it mean is it cannot find this variable I've defined here. Well, I make two errors here. First, I misspelled birth. It should be like this. So now my program could be correct, but it still isn't. And why is this? Take a moment to think why this error was here. Okay, well, the Arduino code is case sensitive. Here I use a capital Y, and here it is defined with a lowercase y. So I have now the same typing. And now it should succeed. Another trick to do, if you're looking at it, I can't see the difference. So what I do is that if you go back, this is what I want. I copy it and I paste it over my variable. So I know they are the same. And the trick is that you can double click the word. So if you double click, it selects the whole word. It works in your whole operating system. It's quite neat. So if I scroll back to the error a little bit up, you also see here it says online. 34, that's what it meant here. So here, it is very easy if you have a very big program, the compiler actually tells you where the error is. So it says on line 34, I do not understand what you mean. So now when I run my program, there's another error. It says it's expected a comma of a semicolon. And what happens here, I added it here, here, but it didn't close this line. So now the program should be able to run. And if you see, it's done compiling. I use Verify because I'm not sending it to my Arduino. But as you can see, now it works and we can calculate the age. But we were talking about variables and variables tend to be changing. But in this example, actually nothing changes. The year of birth is fixed, the current year is fixed, the age is calculated. So the only thing which is changing is the age. 
Well, there is a solution for this to make this even nicer, and that's the word const. Const means constant, and a constant doesn't change. So now I define the year of birth and the current year as two integer of the t uh, two constants of the type integer. And that means I cannot change them, but the advantage is that the compiler knows, okay, I don't need to look at these variables, I don't need to watch them, because they stay the same. And for example, now when I change the year of birth, so now I say year of birth is 1987, it should throw an error. And it does. Because it says assignment of read-only variable year of birth. And it is read-only because we define it as a constant. If I remove this, then we should be fine. So keep this in mind when designing your program. If there is no need to change a certain definition, then make this variable make it a constant because then the compiler knows you don't change it. And it's another memory optimization. Another use of constants is for configuration. For example, here I've defined a LED pin to pin 13, a motor pin to pin number 5. And the nice thing is, if you change your circuit on your breadboard, then you only need to change the configuration in a central place. You inside your code, you just reference to pin LED and pin motor. And you don't care about what number that is since it's inside a constant. So that's really useful if you sketch getting bigger, then you can use constants to define your pins. So I learned you some tips and tricks about variables and constants. Try to keep this in mind when you're developing your next Arduino program. Keep in mind that sometimes variables can become constants because they, doesn't change, or they don't change. And if you have any questions, leave them in the comment section and try to answer them. And I see you in the next episode.